Good evening, everyone. I'm GW Fox. Welcome to the Model Gaming Show. Uh, this is our 38th show. I'm looking forward to it. This is for the week of August 5th. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. I'm actually, off the top, going to tell you I'm going to postpone my four-part series on consoles and PCs. Of, uh, this was supposed to be why I did not purchase a PS4 and how much I regret, regret this decision. I'm actually going to push that back to next week. We've got a lot to talk about that I want to get into that I'm really excited about. And I'd rather have that be uh, its own thing. So first off, um, we got Dead Cells released August 7th, uh, got an 89 on Open Critic, which is pretty great. Um, I'm gonna talk about that just a little bit more. I know there's like a big hubbub that happened this week. I don't really have much to say, um, more than uh, professional journalists have already said, but I do wanna talk about it a little bit. Overcooked 2 came out August 7th, currently got an 83 on Open Critic. Monster Hunter World, uh, Open Critic doesn't se separate PC, so it's still got all of its old views. So on Metacritic, it, when I last looked, it had an 89 with 10 reviews. Um, it, it's just supposed to be the same great game, but better. There have been some bugs, though, that have been reported, and they're ironing them out. So I'm probably going to wait to buy that game and get into really playing it seriously. And then We Happy Few, August 10th, uh, only got a 67 right now, so hopefully... Um, you know, something more comes of that game. But going into the Dead Cells talk, um, IGN staff writer Philippe Mewson, or Mewchin, I don't know uh, how to pronounce that, but those are my best guesses, um, frankly blatantly plagiarized his script from Dead C for Dead Cells from Boomstick Gaming. Um, he was then promptly fired and um, released a video that did not go over well basically stating that, uh, you know, this was a witch hunt and that, you know, encouraging um, Kotaku's Jason Schreier to find more evidence because this is BS and then Jason Schreier was given more evidence about a review that he did that blatantly copied in Gadget. Um, this isn't a good look, he's handling it very poorly and at this point my only real comment is that plagiarizing is bad, don't do it especially if you work for arguably the largest video game site on the web. Um, there's just so many eyes on you that there's no reason to. Also, um, get good at your craft. Get better at writing. Form your own opinions. It's okay to be opinionated. Um, one of my favorite reviews this year uh, that I really enjoyed was from Michael Huber at Easy Allies, his review of Vampire. He gave it like a 5.5 out of 10 because of his harsh criticisms and while that was much lower than everybody else's, his reasons were really good. So um, it's fine to be opinionated, especially if you can back that up with those reasons. Not everyone can like every game and that's okay, but at least use your own words. Tonight I want to talk about three things, Smash versus Red Dead versus Doom and that's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Red Dead Redemption 2 and Doom. Um, really big games all releasing fairly soon. Doom we don't know, but we don't know when, but we know it's going to be coming out probably next year uh, in a big time slot. Um, two games that are coming out this year, and they all released great information on them that I want to get into. And the first was Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Nintendo had a direct. It was like 26 minutes long. I'll just put it this way. The way things, the way Nintendo has been handling things recently, I, I think they've, they could have been doing a lot better, uh, frankly, with how they've released their information and how they've been going about it. And then they come in and do this and essentially make everyone make everyone eat crow. Um, this direct was incredible. I was not hyped for this game at all. Frankly, I don't have anybody to really play games with on the couch anymore, and those are my greatest Nintendo experiences. Um, Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, all of the sports games, right? Those are couch co-op friendly, and I think Super Smash Brothers is the ultimate example of that. No pun intended, but I regret saying that it is the ultimate way. Um, the hype is real, man. Uh, the hype is really real. This Direct did everything that you want uh, something like this presentation to do. It it showed off everything that you could want and really a lot of things that you could ask 
in terms of this game and really broke down a lot of the mechanics and what you can do. So I want to just go um, what I liked piece by piece. I didn't like dislike anything, honestly. I really didn't. It was a, an enrapt, enrapturing 26 minutes, right? So first, I just want to say their shorts are amazing. That short with Luigi is so good and has so many funny uh, physical comedy elements like all the little in bits with the shorts are incredible the Luigi stuff Luigi died like straight up on screen just like Mario did in the last one like death took <laughs> Luigi's soul from his body um, and then that's how they introduce Simon and Richter Belmont uh, fantastic intro um, it was incredible and I'll get into the new character releases and then I want to talk about the the short at the end with Donkey Kong Country or Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong laughing and then King Day to Day trolling them and uh, this was really damn funny and a perfect way to introduce a new character in King King rule King K rule uh, King K rule had that music that they played that is some of my very favorite video game music that boss fight is some of my very favorite video game music and it was perfect perfectly executed for a new fighter um, and I'll, same with Simon and Richter Belmont uh, just really good it's mainly Simon and then Richter is an echo character with different voice acting and slightly different variations but really cool finally getting Castlevania in there really great um, it, it's they, they release so much information on the game that I want to go over that I think is important. But having Simon, Richter, and King K. Rule in the game, really cool. And they said they're going to have more new characters announced before the end of the year. So there's going to be more released, which is great. We have until December 8th, so fantastic. Um, the music that they talked about, there's 34 tracks for just Castlevania. That's incredible. Uh, speaking more on the music, there is 800 music tracks and if you count certain variations there's over 900. Uh, they showed a really funny gimmick shot of a girl just plugging in um, headphones to her switch so she could listen to all the music. I don't count the switch as an mp3 player but if I could buy that album I would. I would in a heartbeat. Um, there's gonna be 103 stages and if you count the variations on the stages of having the final destination version and then the just flat version is over 300. That's crazy. I'm gonna say it's over 100 stages. That's perfectly fine. Some of them look great, and they've they're keeping a lot of the old school aesthetic for the N64 stages, so you can keep the pixels and stuff like that. It's really great. Um, there are a ton of new assist trophies, and I don't want to go over all of them, but there was a duck hunt one that was really cool, and a, a claptrap one that was really cool. And then my favorite one was Ditto. They showed a bunch of new Pokemon that were in there, and really fun, but the Ditto one mimics any character in the game, and there's going to be like 70 of those, and does their moveset. That's a Pokemon. That's crazy. That's a stupid assist trophy. Um, Zero from Mega Man is who I meant uh, for the Duck Hunt one, not not Duck Hunt. Zero from Mega Man looks so great. I kind of wish he was an Echo character and not an assist trophy. Um, they've got Alucard as an assist trophy, which is awesome, and he looks like a badass, hard to beat. For Simon Belmont, they showed boss fights now, where Medusa's head comes in, Dracula's comes in, the werewolf comes in. It's Dracula's castle. It's his stage. Incredible. Um, then they announced a total drop uh, from nowhere for Monster Hunter World, which is awesome. Rathalos from Monster Hunter is both an assist trophy and a boss, which is really cool. He's the first and only character to do that in any Smash game. Really damn cool. And I'm really liking how this is going to be the Smash to end all Smashes. And it's probably going to be... Um, the last smash for like 10 years i know i keep saying that but i actually believe that that this is going to be it for a while um i want to talk about some data they showed the training mode and there's so much stuff that you can do in that training mode and all the data that it shows you uh there's arcs that it shows on how hard you hit the trajectory of your opponent and how far they go 
For professionals, that is gonna be incredible. I think there's so much crazy data in there that that is a really cool tool that you're gonna be able to use and refine your characters. It shows that Nintendo's serious about getting rid of Melee in tournaments, honestly, that this is gonna be the one going forward. And then this should be the one, honestly. I mean, Melee's been, what, it's 14 years old or something like that. Like, they're, they want this to be the new one that is played at all tournaments. Um, the only thing that is left is there was a big question mark that they pointed out that hasn't been released yet. Um, they've introduced a classic adventure mode, or excuse me, a classic mode where you fight to get to the you know master hand at the end. Uh, they did not show master hand or who the last boss is, but you're going to be fighting classic mode, which is great. But it could be an adventure mode, an all-new adventure mode, or an all-new mode in general, and that gets me super excited. And they said that they're going to announce that everything will be announced before the uh, before the end of the year and before the game launches. I really hope they do a beta. I really think they need to. Um, their online is launching in September, The specifically what they said, the second half of September. And I think they need to do a beta. I really think they need to do a beta. I hope they do a beta. So that's it for Super Smash Brothers. Let's move on to Red Dead Redemption Volume 2. Uh, my most hyped game of this year by far. Um, the first is in my top five. It's incredible. It's an incredible game. And I think this is a lot of people's most looked forward to game this year. Um, the animations look fantastic. Uh, just what they've shown. It was a little over six minutes and that's the thing that I was most impressed by just watching is the animations look friggin' great. Um, especially the fighting and the horse animations. There was one horse animation that like blew me away where the horse did like a, a U-turn almost. It was really not, not like a forward facing U-turn, but it was like a, a skid, skidding out on a horse, like backing sideways and then going on a U-turn. It was really damn good and looked really like life lifelike. And the fighting animations, the brawling animations looked really damn good. Um, the lighting. So much of this that they show is in different stages of light and it all looks incredible. Like this game is gonna be a visual stunner. And I, I know that people are, some people are saying it doesn't look great because you got games like God of War. I, this is an open world game that's gonna be massive and the visual fidelity on everything looks incredible. Like, you have to take that into account that this is an open world game that's in massive. This is gonna be like 100 gigs on your hard drive for sure. Like, I can totally see this being like a day one 50 gig patch on top of your 50 gig game. Um, one thing, a couple things to note about gameplay. So this is all about gameplay. The camp that you're at is moving. Now, I don't know if that's story based or that the camp just moves every so in-game hours, right? But it's constantly moving. Um, different actions can be taken in different situations. So for story missions, there was like antagonize and insult and like coalesce basically and then another one it was like beat or slap or different ones like it gave you different variations on what you could do in these situations which i thought was really cool um you can really grow close with the other outlaws in your camp uh there seems to be a lot there seems to be 15 20 30 people and all a lot of them have side missions i think those main seven right you keep seeing seven in the promotional materials and i think there's going to be about six or six main people besides you that you can build relationships to a lot and i hope one of those is john marston i think that would be very interesting but if it's not that's cool as well um a lot to comprehend and take in in this trailer a lot going on you see Blackwater um, a little bit more you see a different towns a little bit more and it's only six minutes uh, you see Deadeye and the cool thing about Deadeye at least the one takeaway from what I remember is in the first game when you did Deadeye it snapped back to each of the people you targeted and in this one once you highlighted those people it stayed in the last fixed location you were where you weren't and you see your character just popping off on those people and so your camera never moves after the last one which i thought is a great improvement actually it was always jarring going like tch, 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 like really uh segmented in your kills where this one is just going to be super smooth and cinematic that's my big takeaway is this game looks really cinematic this game is really weird though because it's almost like anti-hype because i know it's going to be a 10. it's like the most obvious nine plus game you've ever seen and i i know people are 
clamoring for something new and different but if this is just a prettier more developed deeper red dead redemption i'm gonna be really happy again that game was one of the best games of last generation uh I, I i could make an argument that it was the best and i don't even like really grand theft auto games i really don't i think that that's my favorite rockstar game by a lot like a considerable amount and um it looks like everything has just been improved and it's deeper uh the wildlife you can hunt take back to camp feed your people take the hides sell them it's not going to be the same animation of you getting like pelts and stuff like that um, it all kind of matters and it looks like everything in the game all the systems matter and that's really entertaining um that's going to be it for red dead uh this is part one of their official videos this game releases on October 26th, if I recall. So we've just got a bit, two, month, two more months out. I assume they'll do three videos, um, maybe five, if we're lucky. So expect one in the next couple of weeks, and then another one in a couple of weeks after that, and then a final launch trailer that's just gonna be like two minutes. That's, that's my guess, at least. Um, next, QuakeCon keynote. Cool stuff to announce. Um, just gonna touch on this stuff really quick because I encourage you to go watch the gameplay of this for yourself as it is amazing. Um, Quake Champions, never played it, looks really, really fun. It's crazy fast paced deathmatch. Uh, they brought back the Death Knight, really cool. And going forward, it's now free to play for everyone. That's really awesome. You can buy stuff in game, which I think is how a lot of games are going, especially like this. It's one, it's a few modes, but it looks incredible. It actually makes me want to get back and play some Quick Champions, and I might get back into that. Really cool stuff. Um, Rage 2 looks really damn fun, and it looks like, it looks like Mad Max Fury Road, and that might be one of the highest compliments I can play to any game. Is that's one of my favorite movies of the last five years, and it looks like that that world and that game looks like a perfect representation of that world. It looks like a mix of the first Rage and Fury Road and the Mad Max game all into one in this hyper-violent world, and um, I'm super excited for it. I just wanna play it. It looks like it's gonna be one of those games that I'll just knock out a couple hours every day and beat it in a week uh, and have my fun with it and just go, damn, that was really fun. Um, one of those experiences. So. Super pumped for that, but they saved the best for last in Doom Eternal. And I will say that the Doom 2016 uh, was fantastic. I think I still like the um, New Order and the New Colossus Wolfensteins better, but because of the story elements they do, this Doom might beat it, man. Uh, this action is incredible. And I honestly can't wait to play this on a PC with a mouse and keyboard. Um, like I said, and I said before, I play most of my games with a controller, even first person shooters, because I like to sit back and I kind of like to take things in. But what they did was really smart. And I really liked how they did this. They showed you someone playing a sizable chunk, like a five minute chunk of the game in one of their arenas, right? Uh, with a controller. And it's locked 60 frames, guys. Locked 60 frames, super important. It looks incredible, by the way. The art style and the graphics and everything look amazing. It looks incredible. And then they showed you what it's like to play on a mouse and keyboard, super ramped up, with one of their perks was, like every kill you get uh, launches you into like basically an extended boost. And it looks so damn fast paced. And I honestly, I'm never gonna be one of these pros that play these games. But I'm, I can't wait to see people's videos of them never touching the ground because one of the great gameplay developments they've made on this is the super shotgun where you're literally changing the barrel into different shooting modes and one of those has like a hook on it where you can launch and hook yourself into, a, into an enemy and it pulls you to the enemy to blast them and I can't wait to see videos of people just beating an entire area without ever touching the ground. I can't wait for that. That's going to be awesome. Um, this looks like everything you want to do a sequel. It looks like you're in hell for the beginning of the game and a lot of it, but also going to different places, like different worlds completely. One of them really looks really angelic and almost Roman-esque, like, uh, like Colosseum-esque, like 
old school um, Greek. Do you know what I mean? Marble. It looks like totally alien and it looks very, very cool. It looks like we're going to get a lot of new environments in it, which is fantastic. And, um, and just everything looks so damn smooth. I know people were worried that this was just going to be Doom 1.5, but it looks like so much more than that. And I, I, I'm, I'm really excited. One really cool thing was after the arena was almost done, a player character boss like Dark Souls came in to fight you. So that means like I could invade somebody else's game and then would spit me in at the end of an arena and go in and fight all these people, uh, fight against a player character, which is super cool. Knowing me, I'm gonna wuss out and probably just play the game once through uh, to beat it and then maybe deal with that but otherwise um, nothing negative about this it looks frenetic it looks fast it looks fun so many more animations so many more kill animations for every enemy so many things that you can really do for kills in this game and that encourage this fast gameplay and that's what I like is it encourages you to keep moving and be on the offensive and it's great so the header I have is Smash versus Red Dead versus Doom, right? And I'm, I'm still looking forward to Red Dead the most. And while Doom looks incredible, I think this Smash Brothers Ultimate Direct was one of the best pieces of marketing they've done yet. I, I, I think that it was incredible, the, the, the structure and all the stuff that they showed and all the data. And just going over those numbers and just going over everything and the passion involved and it got me hyped. It got me super hyped, more hyped than I've been for a game in Nintendo in a long time and it's become a day one purchase, absolutely. Um, I'm not going to wait to buy that. That's going to be a game that I buy day one and play day one, absolutely. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I, I, my hype is still more for Red Dead simply because I'm going to play it almost two months before Smash. but. The way that they did that and the comedy that they used and the bits and the 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 amount of money that was thrown at this man. Those those little sequences that they did with Luigi and King Day Today, there's so much money thrown at this. It's crazy. Uh, and, and you can tell, like you can tell the quality that they're investing. And it's just got me really excited. Um, that that's gonna do it for tonight's show. Uh, thank you so much for for tuning in. This is, I, I'm GW Fox. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter, GWFAWKES. Um, you can find me on Twitch, Model Gaming Show, twitch.tv slash Model Gaming Show. And on Twitter are all my archives under Model Gaming Show. I'm here, usually Sunday nights at around seven, but I change it up depending on uh, what my schedule is. Sunday evenings, we'll say. Um, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights around 7. This is all Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'm in LA, so I got to stay on that Pacific Standard Time. But thank you for joining. And uh, if you like me, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, please, I encourage you to share this with your friends. I'd like to build a community and, uh, and have great discussions with you all. So um, next week should continue with the uh, why I have not purchased a PlayStation 4 yet and how much I regret. I'll finish up that series. And and um, I've got a couple of changes that are coming. I've got to do some testing first. Um, I'm thinking of getting rid of the uh, the lav mic here and getting a more formal, better sounding mic. I, I thought this would do it since uh, I thought it would be a little bit more, a little bit better sounding, but I feel like I can get better sound now with a, a Yeti or something like that. Um, and I'm gonna try and get the video fidelity up a little bit more. That might sacrifice uh, some streaming things but uh, for this show, but I'm going to do some tests and see where it's at. But as always, I'll keep you posted. So hope you all have a great evening, day, or morning whenever you're watching this, and cheers.